So we're here with the Edgewater, and uh, hi, so who are you? Uh, my name is Matt Massey. I'm the uh, Vice President of Marketing with Edgewater Wireless. And uh, you're making a Wi-Fi solution, a Wi-Fi chipset, or what, what is this? Yeah, so we started from the ground up, and we have a multi-channel Wi-Fi chipset. Uh, so we own our own silicon, and we have 24 patents wrapped around our silicon, all focused on one thing, solving high-density Wi-Fi. Solving high-density Wi-Fi. Here's a, some more information about what you're doing. Um, so it's been a big investment for a while to do this? It is. So it's uh, roughly $60 million invested in developing the chipset and radio cards. But what we enable, though, is we enable multiple channels of transmit and receive on a single radio. Uh, so it's all Wi-Fi standards compliant, but we're really talking about using the spectrum more efficiently. And on a single radio, we can do that by enabling three channels in 2.4 and three channels today in 5 gigahertz. So the normal way, uh, the Wi-Fi has like 15, 13 channels as well, or what is it? But you can only use one at a time, and that's, that's really the problem. Way, right? Yeah, that's the normal and way. all those channels are the Wi-Fi channels that exist. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And you can take three of those or so six we, of those? We can utilize three channels in 2.4 and three channels in 5 gigahertz. And uh, nobody does that when they do MIMO and everything like that? Yeah, so MIMO is, isn't done at the hardware level, so that's all things that are operated above that level with antennas or uh, algorithms or very cool technology like beamforming. Within a high density environment, a lot of the value of those technologies like MU MIMO or beamforming, they go out the window because the way the Wi-Fi protocol is written and the way Wi-Fi spec is written is that um, when a Wi-Fi radio broadcasting in a high density environment senses interference, those wide channel configurations that benefit uh, architectures like 802.11ac or 802.11ax, those channel widths actually back off and very quickly you go back to traditional standards Wi-Fi. So we said, well, let's understand how a high density uh, environment works and let's build a more optimized Wi-Fi chipset and radio to operate within those high density environments. So uh, could you grab this? Uh, can we go just out over here? Yeah. Uh, let me just go over here. Uh, could you describe, what is that? So uh, this is the world's first uh, multi-channel access point. This access point can do up to six channels uh, with only two radios. Thanks to your chipset. Thanks to How our chipset. How is it possible? It's not possible to do this. It's not software. possible, yeah. So it's not software configurable. So we've got 24 patents layered around our technology and primarily focus on uh, interference mitigation. So uh, the best way to use your technology is to have both the sender and the receiver using the same chipset, or? No, 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 so everything is standards compliant. <coughs> so the device or the user has to do nothing on their end. So we're still using the same standards compliant Wi-Fi, we're just using Spectrum more efficiently. So that means when you enter a room that has this hotspot, the Wi-Fi is gonna be better. The Wi-Fi will be better, and you as a user will have no idea that there's anything so different. No matter what device you're using, phone, laptop, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just better somehow. It's just better, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because uh, uh, the the Spectrum is a limited resource, and you are like intelligently using it. Yeah, so we're, we're optimizing the use of the available Spectrum, right? So with high density, there's only so many channels available within the unlicensed Spectrum. So what we do, and we'll use 2.4 gigahertz as an example, we take in the entire Wi-Fi spectrum, we take in the entire 2.4 gig band, and then we separate out our channels of transmit and receive. And so is this a standard router? Just, uh, it has a connect, uh, yeah, connections, connections and everything right else here. can just come in. This is, We've got this one as an empty one, but yeah. Um, yeah. What's gonna be the price for one of those? Uh, so price range can uh, really matters what's under the hood, not what the box looks like. Um, so prices can range anywhere from uh, eight to twelve hundred dollars on the low end, up to five or six thousand dollars on the high end. So and that's really based on channel configurations, everything else. So your market is uh, enterprise access, access. Primarily focused on enterprise, retail, venue, event venue, uh, stadium. Uh, but we're actually getting a lot of interest uh, for the home market as well. Is there anything about reaching further? Does that help when you do better use of the spectrum? No. So uh, reach is really with the unlicensed spec. Um, radio signals operate the way radio signals do. We can't change any of that. Um, really depends on the environment you're deploying in, just how far the signal will reach. 
Um, really what we're focused on is that spectrum optimization piece. So places where it's very busy is great, right? Yeah, wherever there's a like high a density of users, like a trade show in here, where yeah. if you tried to connect to the Wi-Fi right now, it would be next to impossible. How much better does it get with your solution? Because there's still going to be a limit, right? Is a it was originally designed for the micro oven, right? The Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's going to be a limit even uh, with your technology. Or does it make it like orders of magnitude better? No. So I mean, Wi-Fi is a contention-based protocol. No matter who's making the Wi-Fi access point, uh, it really relies on physical science in order to operate. So what we're focusing on is operating better in high density. So more devices connected is really what we're trying to solve that issue as well as being able to operate within a high, high interference environment. Does your technology potentially work with other other types of uh, uh, networks, maybe 5G or something? Yeah, so great question. So our patent portfolio of 24 patents is OFTM based. And that means that there's the potential to take our patent portfolio and work them into a 5G product. Today we're focused on solving the biggest issue in Wi-Fi. Uh, our biggest issue, which is Wi-Fi and high, high density interference. I think it'd be great if there was something uh, the similar size of a home router or something like that, that uh, people would install and start building a 5G network that is like free yeah, yeah. for everybody to yeah. use somehow, you know? Yeah, I Could mean... Could your chipset be useful for that because yeah, you would be optimal? Potentially, yeah. I mean, wherever you need to optimize spectrum, we. You know, it started off years ago is that, you know, you'd go to the store and you'd buy your Wi-Fi uh, router and you just install it in your home and you had Wi-Fi. Today, everyone's become an unlicensed Wi-Fi engineer and Wi-Fi is everywhere. So Wi-Fi success is also its biggest problem uh, in that if we're going to deploy the next generation of networks, regardless of whether it's 5G, LTE, some LTEU, some mix of all three, we need to optimize our spectrum use and make it make it more efficient, uh, and that will all help us all benefit from a better connected experience. So, where's your company based? Company's based in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, is there many people working in the company? Yeah, so we're roughly 20 to 25. Uh, we keep a very lean, tight focus on engineering and development, and that's that's our primary focus is is, is on development. How long has it been going? Uh, so we've been around since roughly 2013. Um, and focused on this, this yeah, fo physical. Yeah, focused, wifi? focused on solving Wi-Fi. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's going to be an interesting conference for you, right? Are you launching? It is no. So uh, we actually launched this access point uh, at the uh, the uh, Mobile World Congress last year. Yeah. Uh, but we've seen some significant traction of late, so we're uh, we're really excited about this show. Mm.